to go Christmas shopping, sweetie. Aww. Oh, come on, you can get yourself a treat. Fine. To the shops. This man is Alan, and he is responsible for my wallet being raided, of which the Viking whores would have been proud. Well, I survived today's shopping, and you'll be proud of me for not putting an unforgivable curse on some of the humanity I've had to deal with today. So, onto some of the goodies that I've managed to procure for your enjoyment, for your viewing pleasure. Firstly, I dig into my bag. Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Now this is based on a award-winning board game of uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill. It's just a Dungeons and Dragons version of that game, as you can see there, lovely artwork on the box. In the actual box, we have Betrayal at Baldur's Gate Horror Experience 3 to, uh, for 3 to 6 Adventures. Now that is an odd thing about this game. It is actually just for three to six players. So if you were having, like, just watched a game with you and your missus, for example, it's not an easy one just to pull off the shelf and uh, and dive in there. It's still a wonderful game, but that is a minus to it. Now with it, you get obviously the book. You also get these two, which are Secrets of Survival, Do Not Read Until the Haunt Begins, and Traitor's Tome, Do Not Read Again Until the Haunt Begins. Basically, it's a book um, describing the adventures within the actual game. Now, inside the actual box, first of all, we have a measuring stick of Doofa. Now, this is, I guess, the turn counter and damage counter that they were talking about in there. I haven't used that in the playthrough that I've been, but we shall see. Now, I do like the way that they've done the, uh, the tiles in this. And um, basically, your character has got you know, uh, the average starting position in a, in a slightly different colour to what the, uh, well, you got the might, the sanity, the speed, the knowledge. If any of these uh, traits were to go to the score mark, that person would be dead. And obviously they are flippable, so you get a more powerful uh, character on the other side and it's all gravy. I do like that. And then you have special abilities each. Start the game with a square bardic inspiration token. During your turn you may give the token to another adventurer within three tiles of you. They can return the token to you and add one to the result of a non-horned roll during their turn. Smashing, so it's just basically a uh, ongoing buff. That's smashing what we've got there. We've got Aldan Pirate Dwarf Protection. When an adventurer, monster, or NPC on your tile would take any damage, you may choose to take the damage instead. Right, I, th I believe um, there's two different types of damage you can get. It's physical, which goes on your speed and might, and there's mental, which goes on your sanity and knowledge. So obviously that this person would be leaning towards the might and the speed sort of damage. Mind you, his knowledge is not there. It should start on three, I believe. Yeah, ooh, yeah, he's, he's the one with the starting things. Stone Cleaver, Reckless Attack. Smashing, that is. Very good. What else have we got here? Age 25, we've got uh, Vort Dormal, Half Orc Cleric. Start the game with two square healing ward tokens. Once during your turn, you may discard a healing word token to choose an adventure on your tile, yourself included. They gain one in trait, in a trait that is below its starting value. Smashing. Notice that it won't allow you to go below the starting value on that. Quite interesting. Right. Ravoyu Escanor. I do love the names in this. They are quite a fantastic thing. Uh, wild magic. When you attack, you may use knowledge or sanity instead of might. That's still obviously he's got just using his magic powers instead of his, his fists. It's all good. What we've got is Tasha Bright Bottle. Cunning action. Looks like a tavern wench or something. What is it? Oh, no. Halfling Rogue, age 175, really? Ooh, there uh, we got Halfling Druid, age 112. Wild shape, once per game, during your turn, you can choose one wild shape. Badger, mouse, owl, or tortoise. Just to modify your things there, what we've got here. We've got a dark elf, by the looks of it. Leofan Tlabor, and Avrexis Mizrem. <laughs> You'll have to forgive my pronunciation on this, it's absolutely phenomenal. When you attack, you may use sanity instead of, my again, magic based. Uh, that's really cool. And what we've got here, we have got an amazing, amazing amount of tokens. That is phenomenal. Now, looking at these, we have NPCs, I think. Just to show you that, let's bring that up to the camera so you can see. 
I'm just gonna put it on the auto focus. Don't think it'll do it to be honest. There we go. Lovely nice little face there. That's good. And obviously you've got your obstacles. Um now I believe these tokens are just to represent the bad guys in it. And if you flip them, if you actually cause damage to them, they don't actually die. You just flip this and they, they skip the next go. So um, there is quite a lot of threat in this game. What else we got in here? We've got a rather scary looking banshee. Wait until the autofocus catches up on that bad boy. Oh, girl, in this case. Uh, what else we got? Ooh, uh, now look at that. A lovely looking beholder. And what does that say to you? To me, that says doom. Now that is phenomenally good. <laughs> Right, what we got? We got items, green slime, uh, apparatus of Qualsh. Apparatus of Qualsh, no idea what that is. If any of you people know that out there, you'll have to tell me that in the uh, in the comments below because quite frankly, I'm shrugging my shoulders here. That's lovely, that is. Let's have a look what we got in here. Oh, let's move all these little... Oh, I got a little token of a dude there. Check that out. Very tiny thing. Looking rather splendid with that amazing beard. Could be a level, what, eight beard at that. Right, now this is one of the starting tiles. It's getting close there so you can actually see. Yeah, look at that. Now the colors are amazing. It's a really, really fine graphic. It's about, what, a mil and a half cardstock there. It's not too bad. It is pretty good actually, but the actual graphics on them are phenomenally detailed. I mean, if you look in the corner, if you can look in the corner there, you see all like the little pots and the candles melting away. Really, 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 really gorgeous there. That is phenomenal. Look at a tavern. Inner chamber. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Now, in these, we have three different sets of cards. You've got your catacombs, you've got your streets, and then you should have your buildings, which are gonna be in here. Now I'm gonna get just an example of one each. So the example of a building, storehouse, and on that, you would place next to that when you uh, when you walk through that door. You've gotta be careful, you've gotta uh, join up the doors together to make it you know, actually work. Uh, sometimes you get tiles that don't quite fit. It does actually say there is rules regarding on how to how to work that out and to uh, adjust it so it does actually work. That's that's all cool. And you have the uh, different. You got like catacombs so you can actually go underground as it were. And there you got flooded chamber. You may attempt a sandy roll of three plus to cross. If you fail, you stop moving. So obviously it's just a little little trap to slow you down really really grand but on the storehouse if I show you that it's got this symbol there's a little symbol here this little yellow symbol and what that means is on your pack of cards when the first person enters you can pick up one of these Book of Vile Darkness. Blasphemy is a sin and only you are unable to profit by it. Before rolling a die for a non-haunt roll, you may choose to roll two additional die, maximum of eight dice. If you do, take two points of mental damage after resolving the roll. So, you know, it's got to be an important roll to do that. Obviously, if that symbol had a little spiral, it would be an event. And just for an example of an event, we've got the green devil face. The green stone face of devilish continents protrudes from the wall. Its mouth is agape and filled with utter darkness. The darkness beckons you. You reach the darkness, roll four dice. And obviously the, that roll, you got, you'll find something inside, draw an item card, so you get from that. And uh, if it was a one to two, you're teleported away, discard all kinds of cards, control and place your adventure figure on the Elf Song Tavern tile. Lose one sanity as your clothes didn't come with you. <laughs> so you turn up butt naked in the middle of a pub. Oh, what an experience to have, what an experience to have. I bet some of you out there have that had that happen. Now, it did, did mention having figure, figures in this. Let's have a look at these, what we've got here. Got a fair few that come with it. We'll start with the Orc Man himself. 
rather chunky. Oh, let's get a bit closer to the camera so you can actually see what is going on. Oh dear, right. Let me do that like that so you can actually have the autofocus work. Bit back bop, we have got Orkman Orc face with a lot of armor showing off his bulk there. I do like the fact that it is pre painted in that. Very nice figure. I mean, if you can uh, see that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Right, we have got the next one is. Yeah, look at that for a wizard. Look at his eyes, man. It's like looking into your soul. Yeah. You burn away every single bit of intelligence in your skull there. Here's a chap I don't really want to go against. Ah, here we go. This dude actually looks pretty cool. See if we can get him uh, close up. A little bit dark, you'll have to forgive. A bit more normal. Lovely, lovely looking axe. Good pose, good walking. Strutting his stuff. That's what we like to see in a dwarf. Now what we've got here, now this is the Bard figure. Yep, nope, yep, will it catch up? Nope, maybe. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, I got it. Now that is pretty swish. I mean, obviously we've got a bit of a flappy sword here and it's done by soft plastic uh, sort of rubber, but it's pretty good. I mean, as a standard, <sighs> Wait for the autofocus again. As a standard, I mean, the paint has been slapped on, but considering it's out of the box ready, that is pretty useful. Pretty useful. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, to be honest with you, I could touch up that myself and my dab hand at painting. So we can sort that out. And now this, this lovely lady, Dark Elf. Look at that. Lovely armor. Begging, begging to be highlighted and the ink put on, to be honest, I'll probably paint that up myself properly. Got a little noblet on the end of the sword there. Wonder if that's a problem with the sculpt or something. Let's see if we can get any closer. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. The eyes are a little bit higher than what they should be, aren't they? They're a bit printed. Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah, her, her, her eyes are actually on her forehead there. That's, that's, uh, that's an interesting thing to happen to you on the on a Sunday evening. Bit of a shock, she looks like an half Egyptian painting like that, doesn't she? Oh, and that fat finger. Uh, <laughs> now I believe I'm a figure missing, let's have a look here. Now, uh, this is the little halfling who, uh, oh dear, um, hmm. yeah, yeah, she's, uh, looks like she's having a good time there. Yeah, a little hapsack on the side. And our next goodie pile, I'll take it out of my Christmas bag. We have the Citadel painting handle. Five pound I picked it up for. And to be honest with you, I do a lot of painting for like the Batman series games, and they're mighty fine. And I needed something basically, I you only use a pop with a bit of blue tech on the top, and I just wanted something to hold it a bit better than that. So if I pull a little figure off here, just for an example, so I'm just gonna put that apart, just put a plastic like spring loaded mechanism there. And there it is, nice and secure, lovely jubbly, and just to prove that that is pretty safe on there, I do like that, that is pretty phenomenal. Just moving that around, yeah, do like that, do like that a lot. And there's the man himself, can't really fault that, it does the job nicely. Put them up there with his mates. Lovely jabbly. Right, let's go on to another game. In my magic pile, I managed to pick up Sheriff of Nottingham, where, the, where you play as a merchant from one of the sides here. You have Phil, you have Antoine, you have Clarice, you have Gareth, and you have Keith, and the good old Sheriff of Nottingham in the middle. You play as one of these people here and you are a merchant and the idea of the game is to collect as much and make as much money and profit as you can. The way that you do that is you get given one of these little pouches and you get your draw cards and you make up a hands of like apples and whatnot and 
depending on what you have, you can sneak in a crossbow, which is worth more gold on the market. And if, if you get it past the sheriff, you make more money. Let's have a look on the back of the box here. Let's see. You have an exciting game of bluffing, bribery and smuggling. As a merchant, you want to make as much profit as you can with the goods. But first, you'll have to get past the notorious Sheriff of Nottingham. Fun, fast and engaging, the Sheriff of Nottingham is sure to be a welcome to any game night. The components is 216 playing cards. Now that's got to be like the apples and the bread and things like that, cheese and the chicken. Five merchant bags. Ah, there's the bags there that you put your cards into to make up your hand for that. Where you make up that for, your, for for that specific round. One sheriff marker. Now every every round of uh, every round of the people that are playing become one person. That round becomes a sheriff of Nottingham, and that person has to inspect all of the other people's bags, or you know, and then all the other people have to try and bribe and try and get past the sheriff somehow whether it be through bribery and giving them cold hard cash or giving them a cut of what what they're trying to trade it's all about that kind of banter and scenario which looks really good <laughs> on the inside of the box we have the rule book taking a quick look through the rule book exciting game of bluffing bribery and smuggling for three to five players setting up the game the costs on there. So, for example, those if you, if you get your your bag past the sheriff, this will be on the card. That's where what you'll be receiving that round for for your money wise. That's you know that's your points that turn, and you get cold hard cash from that. But if you were caught out and you were lying to the sheriff somehow, that would be the penalty that you have to pay. Here we go on the back. We have a four to five player game. Let's have a quick look at that because that'll be the thing. Apples, we have legal goods 48 cards and the cold, cold value of each of that is two and the penalty two. Cheese, bread, chicken, da -da, pepper on the contraband, which is slightly more, but you know, if you get caught with that, it's an instant, it's an instant penalty. So you've got your pepper, your mead, your silky crossbow, and you've got your royal goods, which he's going to, the sheriff, he's going to be after with all his uh, his vigor and lust. He's going to be wanting to have that for himself. So he's going to have green apples, golden apples, go to cheese, blue cheese, rye bread, pumpernickel, bread, and royal rooster. Looking at the actual cards itself, let's have a look here. That's a very big character card on there. That's a little pop out there and some uh, some of the gold and silver tokens there. There we have, to be honest, that looks like Friar Tuck, to be honest, from the old. To be honest, that looks like Friar Tuck from the old uh, That looks like Friar Tuck from the old Robin Hood uh, storylines. That's quite good there. And let's have a look at this. Uh, this one that's playing the purple card. That looks like a Maid Marian when they're looking at all the gold and there. She looks rather fine. Rather fine, I think, there. We have our Baker. Ooh, and we've got our Sheriff of Nottingham token. Ooh, just pop that out. Let's have a quick look there. So if it's double-sided, yes, it is. Turn order, market, load merchant bag, declaration, inspection, end of round. You've got your cheese, your apples, your contraband, your bread, and your chicken. That's pretty good there. And oh, we have what looks to be a cheese, a cheese connoisseur. Looks rather, rather regal there and refined. Now the good thing about this is that as well, it, uh, depending on what you, at the end of the game, what you traded in. If the most person, say for example, traded in most chickens, you become the king or queen of the chickens, which I found quite, quite funny in that. Ah, and here it is as well. You have the bank, you have some cards as well. So I see there you've got your gold for how much you get from it and your, your contraband if you, if you fail. That's how much you have to give the sheriff so you don't go to jail effectively. 
you'll find. Then we have the bags here. They look rather, rather good quality. Little popper there. If I can actually close it yet. Quite good, quite thick, quite reinforced. That'll last a while, that will. A nice show for Nottingham logo on the side there. Very good, very good. Pretty cool game, and it does rely on the interaction of people. So um, <laughs> that is a bit of a strange sentiment. But the better group of friends you are, the more interesting game you're going to have with this. It's, it's very, very much like that. You can't take it seriously. You can't take it to heart. It's a wonderful little game. As you know, I'm a fanatical Batman fan. And I managed to pick up two new figures. I've got Zatanna and Jason Blood and um, the Demon Etrigan. You know, gone, gone, the form of man. Arise, the Demon Etrigan. And it's pretty cool. Now, these um, I, uh, I bought, and they're pretty cool. They're the uh, new resin version of it. So we're opening it up, you get the cards first. Now this card is for the Batman game, the Batman miniatures game, and you get uh, the, you know all the stats for the characters on that as well. So you get both sided because it is two characters. And you also get in the multiverse game another card with just all the stats for that for that to happen in the multiverse. So in the multiverse one, instead of just Batman you're against and things like that. It accounts for like Starfire and um, Superman in there, so you can have the higher, higher caliber heroes in there. In the actual box, so we have the. Here we go, Jason Blood, armless. Sculpt's looking pretty swish. I like that, the, the detail on the nose and the face and the cheeks and that is absolutely phenomenal. Now this is a multi-pack here and I picked this up for about, I think it was 18 quid or somewhere around there. But um, normally they retail for a lot more, or the metal ones did, and they have come down in price quite considerably because of the, uh, it's, because the material it's now, it's now out of resin. And this is absolutely phenomenal. This is on a larger base and the actual detail on the face and the chest and the stomach. That is going to be a lovely figure to paint. That's going to be phenomenal. So I'm quite looking forward to doing that. Putting that down, having a quick look at Zatanna. Get the DC Multi and the Batman card itself, which is pretty cool. Get into the figure. And here is the mistress of magic herself, Zatanna. Yeah, look at that. And now the individual figures retail for around about 12 pounds, which is a bit more realistic price for a figure. They were expensive. Well, I'll say more expensive, but yeah, that, that is pretty cool. I do like the face, I do like the little skull. Random bit of leg on the side. Yeah, phenomenal detail on that character. I can't believe how Night Models get the, uh, such fine detail on, on their on their casts. It's, it's, it's wonderful to see. It's wonderful. Lovely, lovely collectors. Collectors game. Right, what do we have here? I managed to pick up one of these action cameras, 4K action camera, for £26, actually. It was absolutely phenomenal. I think they were in Morrison's at the time on one of the Black Five Days things. A little while ago now. And it's pretty damn cool. I mean, to be honest, I've got one here right now that I'm actually using, hopefully, to get some details from. So we'll see whether it actually works or not. But, I mean, it's got 40, 4K capabilities at 30 frames per second. It can also do 720p at 120 frames per second. I think like that, it does suffer from a little bit of fish. Uh, it's got a fish eye lens there, so when you put your fingers really close like that, it's, uh, it's a bit strange. But yeah, it's phenomenal. Wi-Fi as well can be used as a... Um, CCT camera, or you can put it in your car as well. But for 26 quid, as you see, I picked up two. One for me using this, one for the car. Can't go wrong. Absolutely phenomenal bit of kit. Right, what else we got in here? If you ever played Dungeon Saga, anyone, which is this massive tomb of uh, excellence right here, now I really enjoy this game. And basically, it comes in a book, which is really cool and phenomenal. And it's like a dungeon crawler of old, 
and you get uh, massive, massive characters like this to deal with. This is pretty, pretty rocking. Detail on that is phenomenal. Uh, we also get like, for example, here's a hero with one of the actual characters you will be playing as. And I've painted these up myself. And I, I love this game. You also get like uh, furniture within the actual like dungeon itself. And you know, you get like bags of, uh, of barrels and tables and whatnot. And you have to go through through a dungeon, basically just uh, survive the trials and tribulations of that. And it's about like a four or five player game. And uh, yeah, it comes with an absolute torrent of stuff. That is phenomenal, phenomenal. Well, in my outings, I come across one of the expansions for it, which was on sale, which is really cool, which is uh, Dungeon Saga, the Infernal Crypts, which has another, another character to that. So again, it comes in a box of a book. Box, whatever. So it's looking rather fine. And as as ever, the ex, the uh, Infernal Crypts quest book artwork is lovely. Got a list of the new characters on the back and their bios and, and uh, how the other characters have interacted with it, and uh, you know telling you all about what's covered in the new expansion, as it were. Just giving you across there a section of all the characters. That's pretty swish. And from it you get, let's see, new quests, new adventures, wonderful things happening like that. Yeah, lovely to see. But you also get and all the characters aside, there's one of the new characters, so you can see that. Again, very, very, very high detail sculpts. Phenomenal detail. Lovely. What we also get is these tiles which form the actual um, dungeon itself and they are absolutely lovely, lovely artwork on them. Absolutely wonderful. You can take it out there, get some lovely fire pits and infernal spells and walkways of lava. And obviously they're all double-sided and have high quality. It's about what three mil thick, so it it will last. And this is really cool. This is Lord of the Abyss Overlord panel. So you get this is actually for the main bad guy, whoever's playing that, the dungeon master, if you will. It's got all the stats on there and everything to make it somewhat easier. And just a big, big, huge fiery pit of lava and throne. Lovely. Putting that down in the pile. I managed to pick up one of these Winskids premium mats. Now I quite like playing Batman, as you may have heard me talk about earlier, but for a quick game, I like to have one of these Winskids mats. It's not a 3x3 or 4x4 or anything like that, but what they do have is a th uh, three foot long, and a two foot across, and it's uh, split into inches on the actual thing and they are absolutely lovely to see it's, it's a mouse map material and this is like uh, showing off um, uh, shipping containers and on, on the boat so it's quite dark so i have to forgive me on that one uh, if i can show you an actual picture of it on the box mm, not really it's very tiny so you have to forgive me on that so but if i, if I hold that up for you to see Look at that, that's wonderful that is. Quite long, quite well detailed, easy to carry around, lovely and fold upable. 20 quid Kong really. And thank you to Alan for this. Um, basically got to look after the local um, Test of Honor games I run that I run the of some of the events and things like that and he gave me one of these uh, I am your free ninja um, uh, characters like promo cards um, it also comes with a figure now that is a lovely looking ninja figure there's that and yeah what a wonderful little thing so thank you very much Sharon. thank you very much for that and thank you for watching I hope you like the haul that I managed to get and if you could share with uh, me in the comments and see uh, see what kind of hauls that you've managed to get yourself this Christmas. 
Thank you very much. Merry Christmas.